Hey everyone, this is Brian Azzies. I've uh, been having a few requests and it's really it's for something I've been wanting to make again for a while. Some of you might remember, and more than a few of you probably still have, one of our pull ball shifters. These are actual engraved billiard balls. Uh, snickers or snook, yeah, snicker balls. Snook, snooker, or however you pronounce it. Um, yeah, I'm just butchering it. But been wanting to do them again. It's just we ran out of a supply of U.S. made billiard balls years ago. Um, and I've had a couple customers ask me, "Can I? Can you do another one? Can you do some more?" Um, so the other day, I was in uh, was in the store. And I happened to grab some clearance ones at the Walmarts. And these aren't American made balls. No, they're not. Um, which means they probably have junk in them. Whenever you drill these, you find scrap metal in them to get the weight up. Uh, so, we're going to go through the process here of how do we make these. And I'm going to do it on my phone, and I'm going to edit this together probably in the um, cheapest way possible, but we're going to get it done. So, follow, join me, and we're going to get this done. Okay, in our order process, the first step is to put, um, well, to brand them, and also to find the center of the pull ball. Um... Uh, Originally, I just used uh, a vertical mill and just set up a center finder and, you know, went from edge to edge and did it all traditionally. But then I found an easier way, which is even easier because the, we're going to use a laser today. So I have, uh, I have this piece of scrap wood sitting here. Got my cue ball. And I've got my laser software set up here, and the first thing we're going to do is to cut a hole where this can rest. Since this cue ball doesn't have any numbers or anything on it, it makes it a lot faster. So what we'll do is we'll cut that hole, and we'll put this thing in to the hole. And then the, our current laser, which is a lot more advanced than the one we used when we originally made these, uh, we can move the bed up and down so we can change the focus and maintain zero, which is really important uh, if you're going to take and create a fixture and then use that fixture immediately to laser things. Um, eventually, this will all be done on CNC, but this is a lot faster. So, all right, let's cut our center hole, move our table, and then uh, put our ball in and start engraving. Actually cut so quickly that I didn't get the phone out in time. So we got that. Now we can go in our controller. We can move it the wrong way or we can move it the right way. So if you're unfamiliar with how a laser works, the beam comes in from back here, bounces off that mirror over there, comes over to this contraption here, there's a mirror in here, bounces it through the focus lens, this is the final objective down here, and that focuses it down, and we have multiple focus lengths. This is a four inch, this is a half inch, one inch, one and two, uh, and that is a one and a half inch. No, that one is a one inch. Our original one was a one and a half inch. Um, and that is how far your laser is going to be away from uh, the piece that you're engraving. Because lasers, even though in a theory a laser beam is straight up and down, uh, since we're dealing with so many different directions that this is bouncing, our laser beam actually starts out big gets into the focus lens, squishes, and expands again. So that point is where we want to hit the cue ball. Okay. 
I knew that wasn't going to stay, but it is a handy reference to how close we are. Now, a few of the lasers that we have, or a few of the optics that we have for these, allow us a wider spread or a wider range of depths that we have a focus point. Uh, we can use a four inch, this big tall one here. We can use this guy, and it would just require lowering the bed down, but this doesn't make as fine of a point, so we won't get as nice of a detail on it. So, we got this. That's approximate. I'm going to actually bump this up a tiny bit. And we should be able to go over here to our software. So we're going to put crosshair on here. So we know where to center drill it. We'll turn off our cut circle for our little wood fixture. And we'll also, you know, do all that there. So let's close that up. Our framing real quick just to make sure yeah cool that's everywhere it's going to engrave so let's uh, let's fire it up and see how she does and make sure everything's on our air assist is on our extraction is on Yeah, software is giving us an error because this is a really old file. I haven't made one of these in probably six years. So, continue. getting the lettering around both sides here and we have it set to do individual items okay, let's finish up the, the Azis 2023 on here and it didn't put our crosshairs but it did give us a dot Let's see why it didn't give us a crosshair. It's probably because they are open lines and they are not. So what we could do is we could change these to a different color. So we're going to change these to blue in the software here. And then uh, what we got? We'll turn everything else off. 40, 50, which means it'll go 40 millimeters a second at half power. That might be a bit much. Let's drop the power down to 20. Speed looks good. And let's try that. That quick. And there we look, we got a perfect location for our uh, for our markings. So what we can do is we can take this downstairs. You can see these are made out of some nasty stuff and just smoke just yeah. They stink really bad whenever you uh, drill them too. So yeah, we'll take and set up a fixture down on the drill press and we'll go down and drill this and see uh, see what we can do.